It's time to get started on our Nativity Bench Pillow group project. Hey everyone, Kristen Song here, and it is time to get started with our new group project, our Nativity Bench Pillow with our sponsor, Cala Quilt Company. Don't forget that underneath this video in the video description, there is all the information, a direct link to our sponsor, Cala Quilt Company. And don't forget to buy the bundle of quilting from using their affiliate link. That's under the video as well in the video description, list of all the supplies needed. Everything is there underneath this video. So we're going to start today with block one. It's a very simple block, but of course, whenever we first start, there's always more information. So let's go over all of that now and get started with our playtime. I'm excited. This is a smaller project. It looks pretty simple. I think we're going to have a really good time with this and it'll be ready in plenty of time for the holidays. All right. So block one, grab your packets. If you made packets, by the way, so I keep mine in this box, but I found uh, this one is an old, old, old box from Target, but I found one that is the exact same size on Target, or I'm sorry, on Amazon that you can purchase to hold your packets if you choose. And it is clear so you can see through it. I will add a link here for that box. It is a clear plastic box that holds exactly the size of our packets. So that is an easy way to get that. And it helps, it helps to support our channel when you use the affiliate links. So grab your box with your packets. We're going to start on block one. So if you made packets, grab your block one packet. They are The instructions are on page eight. So I'm going to just grab that really quick and grab all of the supplies out of my packet. So I have a couple of changes I'm thinking of, but haven't totally decided on. So I'm just going to give you information in case you decide that you want to keep it exactly as the book, or if you want to make any minor changes, you always have that option, your project, your way, I always say. All right, so page eight. So I'm going to go over what we need for today. I think I'm going to put my box over on the side here. Hold on a sec. Sorry, got a little bit room here. All right, so um, first off, I want to remind you that you do need your um, Kimberbell Light Mesh Cutaway Stabilizer. That's for in our hoop. We will need that today. And I'm going to use my 6x10 hoop. If your largest hoop is a 5x7, you can do that. There is on the CD, there is files for 5x7 or for the regular 6x10 size. Um, there's also instructions on the, the quilting. So, and I'll give you a little note about that in a minute. So you also need your project batting. All right. And I gave a, um, a screenshot, like you, I put up a picture of all of the different cut sizes for your batting. And so that you can just do a screenshot to be able to save that. So all of the, all of the batting for all of the blocks is listed on there so that you can prep your project. All right, and then we will need wash away topping. We'll talk about that in just a minute. All right, so let's go over what we need for today. So the first thing is our main fabric. All right, our main fabric is this blue silky solid. There's no design to it. It's just a blue silky solid. And this we wanna start with at six and a half by 10 and a half. Six and a half by 10 and a half. Now notice our final cut size is not six and a half by 10 and a half. Our final cut size is four and a half by eight and a half. That means that this fabric is two inches larger than what our final cut size is. So it's already cut to size so that it will not pull in from the stitches and all of that. I had a question earlier about that. Do we cut these blocks bigger? We don't. Follow the PDF, just like I said on the prep. These are, they're already cut two inches larger. All right, make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer though. This will help so you don't get puckering. It will help so that you don't um, have any pulling in from the stitches and making the fabric smaller. All of that will be better if you stabilize your fabric. I used the Kimberbell fusible backing on mine and that works great, all right? So like I said, our main fabric is gonna be six and a half by 10 and a half to start with, all right? Backed with fusible stabilizer for sure, all right? Always back your, your main fabric fabric. You can choose to do your applique fabrics. Um, I do. I like to back my applique fabrics with fusible stabilizer, but that's optional. Some people choose not to, and they just do it on their main fabric, but at least do it on your main fabric. All right. And then next we have our palm tree fabric. 
So the palm tree fa fabric also is just a sil silky solid, no design on it. It is a chocolate brown silky solid. And we're going to start with this at four and a half by eight four and a half by eight and like I said my applique pieces I do back them with fusible stabilizer I find that it's easier to cut it won't fray all the edges off and it um, keeps to the size no puckering all of that so I that's what I prefer to do so for the palm tree chocolate silky solid at four and a half by eight all right and then we have the lamb fabric. So I want to talk to you about this. So first off, let me tell you, it is a tan silky solid, darker tan silky solid. Um, this is for the lamb and we want it to be three by two and a half, three by two and a half. I did back mine with feasible stabilizer. Now I saw a bunch of projects that are already completed. It's fun when we start a little bit late because we had to finish up our falling for autumn quilt. So we got to see some people that rushed ahead and already did it and they all look great absolutely great and a lot of them used um, the regular fabric great it seriously looked wonderful so you can do this and that will be great and I may to may choose to also but I haven't decided a hundred percent yet because I'll tell ya I pulled some others so I just want to put this out there and like I said I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet but look at this soft this is a minky um, and it's a good color right <laughs> so I might do that but wait there's more <laughs> or there's this lighter tan so keep in mind that this one is for the lamb oh my gosh it's so soft so that's an option you know you can absolutely use the fabric that is in the fabric kit and or you can save this for a different project it's already stabilized and ready to go for an applique so or you can do a silky solid on this this little lamb or <laughs> there's also look at this minky that has texture to it isn't that fun i love that and it's soft and by the way these are so messy i picked these up to show you and already it was all, all over my clothes so anyway this one was fun this is an idea also and then there's one more and if i if i do i might do this one look at this isn't that so fun oh my gosh this is so plush and it's got um, brown and white weaved in there oh boy this just makes me think of a lamb right how fun is that so again I might use this I have not decided and the ones that I've seen that are already done look fantastic with this but I might I might do mine a little bit different your project your way you get to choose it all right and so and I will let you know when I get there I haven't decided yet so I will let you know as I keep working on this, I will let you know what I decide and I'll show it there. But either way, you want it to be three by two and a half. All right. Whether you use this or a minky or whatever felt, some people used felt and that's a fun option too. So, and that would be easy to work with too. Three by two and a half. All right. For our lamb fabric, whatever you decide to use. All right, and then we have our gold mylar. Now on the gold mylar, notice that there's gold and silver. So make sure you pay attention to how you put it down because this is two-sided. So you want the gold mylar facing up. And I didn't pre-cut mine because I figured we need this on several blocks. So I'm just gonna put it down, use what I need, and then put it in the next day's block or packet, I should say. So this is the gold mylar for the large star. And we want this to be, that's funny, it makes it darker. Um, anyway, it makes it, we want it to be one and a half by one and a half. All right, if you pre-cut yours. The, for the gold mylar for the large star, we want it to be one and a half by one and a half. And again, I didn't pre-cut mine, but that's fine. It, I'll just cut what I need from it. And then um, like when I trim around the applique and then keep the rest and put it in the next block um, packet. All right, and then we need our flexifoam. This came in our embellishment kit for us. I already cut them. There is a description on our PDF of where what pieces that you cut for for your flexifoam um, that was in the the PDF for our embellishment kit. So flexifoam. This is for the lamb base. So we'll put this down before we put our lamb fabric, and I'll show all of that step by step in the directions through photos of this tutorial. So this one we want to be two and a half by two, two and a half by two for your flexifoam um, lamb base. All right. And then wash away topping. So remember I mentioned we need wash away topping today, especially if you're going to use a minky or some, some 
soft fabric, you definitely want to use a wash away topping. I think actually this goes over the star now that I think about it, but you'll, if you decide to use a different fabric on your lamb, you'll want it on that too. All right. So just, just keep that in mind. But this actually is for the large star for that mylar. Um, and we want a piece of wa wash away topping that is one and a half by one and a half. I didn't pre-cut mine. I'm just going to lay it down on there. So one and a half by one and a half for the wash away topping. And don't forget, if you're going to use a minky fabric um, on your lamb, then you want to use this on that as well. It keeps the stitches from sinking in or from your needle getting stuck or anything like that. All right, and then it also says to use a seam sealant or another fray preventative product. Um, you can absolutely do that. that. That's a little bottle of something or other. I have it somewhere. I don't think I ever actually use it, but that's something it says that you'll need. All right, feasible backing. So I want to mention that we are going to quilt this in the hoop. So if this is a first project for you, I know there's a lot of newbies doing this. I want to quickly say that there in our um, bundle of quilting, there is block by block quilting and there's clear blue tiles quilting. So block by block or CBT. We are not using the CBT. We are doing the block by block method. And I have an entire video about CBT versus BBB um, that will help explain it. But for this entire project, we are doing the block by block method. All right. So make sure to choose that. Otherwise, you will not get the tack down of the batting and the tack down of the main fabric. And we are going to utilize those steps. All right. So block by block. Since we are going to quilt this in the hoop, we want our batting. So our batting today is going to be five by nine, five by nine for block one of our batting. Okay. And then for our quilting, we are going to use stars four in a four by eight design stars four in a four by eight design. So this one is the stars. There's stars all over. And initially I was thinking, oh, I want to do this in a metallic. I want it to do it in a variegated and I still might. I haven't completely decided, but it's a pretty busy block or pretty busy pillow anyway. And if you have your quilting standing out, it might be a lot because keep in mind, we're going to have the fairy lights. We're going to have all of those stars that are on um, each block in addition to the stars in the quilting. So it's up to you and your preference and preference and how you like but I'm leaning toward the simpler. I liked the simple, elegant look of this pillow. So I'm leaning toward that, but I did pull out a couple of things that I was thinking. So I haven't decided for sure yet. And I will when I get there, but I brought out this blue metallic because this really matches the fabric and it will not stand out so much that it will take away from the design, but it will make it stand out just a little bit. So that is an option. This is uh, Royal by Glisten. It looks like it's Glide basically. It's the same container as Glide. So I think Glisten is probably the name brand for um, Glide's metallic thread. That would be my guess. Anyway, it is Royal. This is something that could be an option for you if you decide to do. And like I said, it matches really well and it won't stand out so much. So that's an option. I like that. I'm leaning toward it now that I'm, I'm holding it up against the fabric and going, oh, that looks really pretty. Um, but let me tell you that in the in the directions, it says to use um, from our thread kit. So I got the whole thread kit from our sponsor. Um, there were three options, I think, on their website. So you might have chosen to just do the one that had like six um, threads in it or the one that had six threads and a metallic, or you might have gotten the whole um, kit. So Marlin is the one that is in the kit that we are supposed to use. All right. And that looks really nice against our, our thread, our fabric. All right. So that's a good one and it won't stand out so much that it'll take away from the design. So that is a really good option. Or like I said, metallic, if you chose, it's pretty similar. All right. Or one other thing, just throwing out some ideas, um, a variegated thread would be fun, right? Don't you think that would be fun? And that would stand out a little bit, but not too, too, too much. So that's, that was what I initially was thinking. I was initially thinking, oh, that would be so fun, but haven't decided. This one is by Thread Art. It's called Denim, um, and it's color number one, Denim by Thread Art. I bought the whole variegated thread set from Thread Art. I really like it. I think you can get it on Amazon as well. I'll look and if so, I'll add a link. Um, but this would be a really fun option. And I, I stitched it out to see what it would look like. And if you can see, it's not going to take away too much. It's, it's 
just different blues. It looks really good. So those are some options if you decide to do your quilting in um, a thread that might stand out just a little bit, but not too much. All right, so those are some ideas. Um, and like I mentioned on the prep video, you could do it in, um, in a glow in the dark thread, but that's going to stand out a lot. I don't think that there was, there was a dark blue glow in the dark. So this would stand out a lot. It might take away from the design. You, you get to decide some people really like the boldness and some people like things more subtle. So your project, your way, um, for the stars though i think it's like the second to last step i am leaning toward using the the gold star was it um king star king star um i am leaning toward the gold metallic and this is available on our on the website from our sponsor they have it as a thread pack if you chose all right so anyway lots of things to think about how you want to do your project your way so one thing I also want to mention, like I mentioned, the um, clear blue tiles versus the block by block method. If you are doing your quilting and in a five by seven hoop, the quilting is not going to fit. Like I mentioned, we are using a four by eight quilting design. So that obviously will not fit in a five by seven hoop. So you would just do two hoopings, two hoopings of four by four, a four by four design, a four by four design, and then you'll have your four by eight. Super easy. I am not going to take the time to stitch that out and show how to do that like I've done on all of our projects there I looked at um, on, if you go to Kristen creates on YouTube and type there's a little search bar within Kristen creates if you type five by seven in there there are 11 videos showing you how to double hoop with a five by seven hoop so there's plenty of opportunities for you to find how to do that if you haven't done it before it's really simple and um, easy to do but it takes up my extra products and my time, so I'm not going to do it on this one. Um, but you will need to, if you are using a 5x7 hoop throughout this project on, on the PDF and in the um, design on the CD, there are ones for 5x7 users and then there's ones for the 6x10. So you will need to um, know how to do your quilting in the hoop, especially later as we get into the larger blocks. Um, this is the this one and the last one are both um, smaller, but all the ones in the middle are a little bit bigger. All right, so let's see. Um, the stars for design in a four by eight quilting that will be centered in the hoop. So you can, I'll probably just do it on my machine. Actually, I'll probably do it in software. I really like to use software only because then I can see it, but, um, you would just bring in your quilting design first and then bring in your embroidery design and they both will be centered in the hoop. So no changes on that. That will be easy. You can do it on your machine or you can do it in software and then um, merge the two together and send it to your machine either way. Um, there are special trim instructions on this. Make sure I go over, went over everything. Don't forget we're going to use that flexifone before we use our fabric on our lamb. Um, there are design placement lines as the last step. We are not going to stitch those. They are just to keep it so that it is centered correctly in the digitizing process. So we will bypass that. I'll mention that when we get there. Um, and we are going to use our, um, our hoops our what are they called? Our rulers our pop rulers. <laughs> That's what they're called. The pop rulers. We are going to use those. We're going to use two of them for this block. All right. So, um, I will show how to do that. Most likely I've done it on a lot of videos, how we do two of them at one time. I'll either do a video of it or I'll do it in photos, but we are going to use these. Um, I'm sure our sponsor has the orange pop rollers. I have the, um, the holder I found on Amazon, if I find it again, last time I looked for it, they were sold out. But if I find it again, I'll add a link for you. They hold all of the pop rollers super easily. Um, but we will do, there are special trim instructions and I will go over all of that. Since we're quilting in the hoop, a lot of it won't matter. Um, they, they line it up right for us, but I will go over how to use the two hoops together and any specifics that we need to know. Um, did I get everything? Make sure you've got your thread kit from our sponsor and the CD that has all the designs. I think that's about everything. I hope we always seem to forget something. So let me know if I forgot anything, but are you excited to get started? I'm really excited. This is going to be fun. I love our group projects together.
my shirt today. This is a brand new one. I actually made it last night while I was um, editing the prep video. Isn't this fun? This design is from Embroidery Boutique. It says best day ever. It's that little nativity scene with the Jesus in the manger and on the manger or actually on the wood part, I used wood fabric. I thought that was so fun. I have a few different um, wood fabrics. I thought that was really fun for um, this design and I am so I made this specifically for a nativity bench pillow. I'm hoping to make a few more of them. I bought a few designs that I think are really fun. The shirt itself is from Amazon. It's one of my favorites. I really like this one. It's not the stretchy one, but it still is very easy to embroider on. Um, it runs a little small, just so you know. I wear a bigger size than than usual on this, although this one seems to be big, but I haven't washed it yet. So anyway, <laughs> I will add a link here for the shirt if you're looking for a shirt to embroider on. It's a it's a great design, um, and it's it's a it's good, easy to stitch on. So I will add information underneath this video of where I found the design um, cute design cute nativity design I really enjoyed that one and if you haven't seen one of my videos on how to embroider on a shirt I highly recommend it no puckering it works just great every time um, with my the technique that I use so um, take a look on that like I said on that search feature there's a search feature when you go on Christian Creates on YouTube it, you can search within my channel and just type in shirt and you'll see the videos for embroidering on a shirt so fun design hopefully I'll make a couple more before we're through with this project and did you come up with a goal you know I always like to have a goal for every project I think that's really fun because we should always be working on ourselves right bettering ourselves um, there's always things we can improve on none of us are perfect so it's always good to have a project to work on during or a goal to work on during the length of our project so this one I'm doing something very different um, I've got stuff I'm going through we always do right there's always stuff um, but we've got some big family drama going on right now and I tend to isolate when I am going through something difficult I tend to isolate myself and that's really not good that's not healthy it's not going to help me in any way um so my goal is to not isolate how how cool is that that's a pretty pretty good goal for me it's something I have to work on hard actually I tend to I'll get in my room and I'll just work on projects and and work on editing and and work 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 and and so I'm going to make an effort to get myself out get around people um do things that I haven't done normally just get myself out take care of me self-care time so last night I actually took myself to the Festival of Lights. It's the Sensi um, Festival of Lights. They have, it was amazing. It's free and there were a ton of people there, but they lit up all these trees and this humongous tree in the center. And then they have this walkway that you stand in line and you wait to go through and you go through it and there's just lights everywhere. And it was just beautiful. It was so fun, um, very, beautiful good way to get out and it was really really cold the next time I would bring a hot chocolate to walk through all of this with but um, I wore my warmest jacket my warmest socks and and I took myself and went to this um, the Sensi Lights Festival so I was, I was really proud of myself it would have been really easy to just stay inside and and do my usual stuff but I made myself go out and had a really good time and, and I was proud of myself for doing that so it's a different goal for me a very different goal but something that I need to do and something that is something I should work on at doing better for myself. So I'm proud of myself that I, I did the first one. So tell me, what is your goal? What are you working through, working on something that you want to do better for yourself? Share in the comments. <music>